The Mix input is like having a tiny version of vMix running inside a vMix input. You can use it to create separate transitions for overlays and layers like this. And you can use it to create custom outputs for displays like this. So stick around if you want to know a little bit more about the Mix input in vMix. G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. Now before we go any further, I just wanted to let you know that this feature is a little more advanced and is only available in the higher editions of vMix. It's also one of those features that you may need to play around with to see if it's going to be useful in your particular workflow. The mix input allows you to output and control a completely separate mix in vMix. I'm going to show you how you can add a mix input to your production and then some of the things that you can do with it like we did in the intro. As you can see here, I've already set up a vMix production with a few inputs. I have some inputs like a camera with my audio, a PowerPoint presentation, a video, a layered input, a virtual set, and I think that's about it, another camera as well. Now, if this is a little bit overwhelming and you're new to vMix, I'd recommend checking out some of the links in the description that will go over on how to like create a production in vMix. You can also download our free 60-day trial of the Pro Edition to get the hang of things and to follow along as we learn about the mix input. So let's get started by adding a mix input. The mix input can be found next to the add input menu in the bottom left by clicking the little arrow. So that will open up a sub menu and you can select the mix input. Now, as you can see, we have a new input our production called mix two. Now the reason it's called mix two is because your first mix is your main production output mix. Now this one is a second mix. You can have up to four mixes in vMix, your one main production output mix, and then three of these mix inputs that we've just added. In order to add content to this mix input, you can use the drop down menu to select one of the inputs for the preview and one for the output. Then you can use the transition button to move between the preview and the output just like a tiny version of vMix. So for the preview, I'm going to select my PowerPoint presentation. And then for the output, I'm going to select my overhead camera. So as you can see down here, it's kind of like a very tiny interface of vMix. And next to it, I can use the cut transition or I can select a custom one here and also change the duration down the bottom. Now, when I press the transition button here, you'll see that it will move from the preview to the output and the two inputs will change here. So there you go. And if I move this to the preview here, you will see what will happen. Very similar to just having a small version of vMix. So as you can see here, they've moved positions here and then that will represent the full screen transition like so. So if you were looking for a way to transition a, a layer or a, an overlay, you can now use this mix input. So I have a layered input here. So I'll click over this. And as you can see, I have a layered input with a title and I have a picture in picture here. Now, what you can do is you could set up a shortcut if you wanted to, in order to change out this layer to something else. So for example here, so instead of using the overhead, I can go up here and then I could change this to the PowerPoint presentation like so. So that's one way of doing it. And you can set up a shortcut, but you don't see any of like, you won't see a transition or anything like that. So if I wanted to go ahead and create a transition between them on this layer, what I can do is select the mix input instead of one of those. So select this mix input here. And now if I go down here, and then transition, you will see that it will transition that layer using the mix input. So this also works for overlays by setting the mix input as the overlay. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly change this back to a normal camera here, and then I'm going to overlay something. So typically, if I'm gonna overlay, say this PowerPoint presentation, that's there, uh, and then if I wanted to transition to something else, I can't really do it with a seamless transition. It's just going to change it like so. So what I wanna do now is use the mix input. So I'm going to go down to my mix input here. I'm gonna overlay this in channel two like so. And then I can use the transition to transition between them. All right, so one really important thing to note is that the mix input will operate independently from the main mix. So vMix 
uses all of your like automatic play, pause, restart, and unmute features on the main mix. So if you've got a mix input, those things won't work. Now this means that you will need to create shortcuts or triggers or do things manually as opposed to having them automated in vMix. So for example, if I go over here and I set this B's video file to this here, and then I transition it, as you can see, it is not starting the video for me. So now that you have a mix input in the production here, you're going to need to work out the best way for you to control it. Now, as I mentioned before, using the automatically mix audio and automatically play and those type of things only work with your master mix. So that only works for your program output. It won't work for a mix input. So that just means that you need to work out the best way to control it, either manually or using shortcuts and triggers. And it will depend on what input you've got. So things like a camera, you won't need to start that, but a video file, you will need to play or pause that if you're using it. So for a quick example here, these are the probably the easiest ways to do things. So if you wanted to use this video file, you could just hit the play button here, and then you could pause the video. Uh, if you had something with audio and you wanted to make sure the audio was on, obviously you could turn it on, turn it off. Now you could set up shortcuts for this. So I'm gonna go up to the settings section, go down to shortcuts here, and I'm gonna click add. Fine, I'm just gonna use the number one key here and then go okay. Now for the function, I could set up something like play pause, perhaps for the video file, select the bees video. Okay, so now I have this here and I'm just gonna clone this and I'm also going to set up another function on the same key. So for, let's go with audio here. Select audio and yep, it's the right video and I'm going to click okay. So now for the number one button, uh, it's going to play pause the video and it's also going to turn the audio on and off. So let's click okay down here. And so this is an example of how you could easily control it with shortcuts. So just press number one. As you can see, the audio is going on and off and it is play pausing the video like so. So that's an option. You could also set up a trigger if you wanted to, to automatically play the video when the mix input was in an overlay, for example. So if I go down here, I go to triggers. And so when this is on overlay in, I could potentially just play the video. So let's go play. Now you've got to keep in mind that this will only work the first time. So it's only going to be when it transitions in, the video file is going to play. So if you were transitioning between, it's not going to happen on that transition. So I'm gonna add this in here like so. All right, so now we've set up a trigger on that mix input. I'm gonna show you the differences in behaviors between using the video file as a part of your main production mix versus a mix input. So when you're using it as a part of your main production, you can use those automatically start, automatically mix audio features that are a part of the input. All right, so here we are. I've moved the video file into the preview here. And if I go into the settings for the video, you'll see that it will automatically mix audio. It will turn that audio on and off and it will automatically play with transition and pause after transition. So let's just close this down. And as you can see, I'll close this overlay. So when I move this from preview to program, it's going to turn on the audio down here and it's also going to play and pause the video. So I bring this across, it starts playing, bring this back, it pauses, back across, back over again, it's paused. Now I don't actually have any audio on this video so you can't hear it, but you'll notice that it did turn on and off. Now, if I use the mix input uh, with this video file, I've set up that trigger to automatically play the video. Now, the problem is, is that when I transition it, say, to the other thing in the mix input, nothing's going to happen because it doesn't have any of those automatic functions in the mix input. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna overlay this. It will play the video here, but when I transition between those two things in the mix input, this continues to play because it doesn't use any of those automatically mix audio or automatically play pause features that are a part of the input settings. So you notice that it did start playing when I triggered it in. However, it's not going to continue to do anything else unless I set up more triggers or more shortcuts or did things manually. So it's really important to keep in mind that when you are using mix inputs as a part of your production, you're gonna have to sit down and kind of think about how you're going to control the inputs when you're using them as a part of mix input. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's probably a really good idea to download vMix or try it out for yourself. The mix input is also handy when you want to create a custom mix that's different to your main output 
for your production. For example, if I was producing a live event, I may want to live stream my entire production, including my cameras, titles, slideshow, and video, but I may want to also display just the slideshow and video on a screen at the venue. So for an example, if I've got this layered input here, I may want to stream this out, this whole thing out to my live stream or recording uh, for my show. However, if I'm at a live venue or an event, I may only want to display, or is it this side? I may only want to display this here. So play the video file or a slideshow locally. I don't want them to see all this other content. Now, typically to pull this off, I would need to send my program output to the live stream. So set up my stream as I normally would and then set up another full screen output so that I can show a particular input locally. So as you can see here, I have this field monitor here where and I'm just sending it a particular input. So I'm just sending it this particular thing here. Now, if I wanted to change what I'm displaying, traditionally I would have to go up to the full screen and I would go to display two, and then I would say change this to a different input, for example, number three. So as you can see, it's now showing my overhead cam. If I wanna bring that back, I go back up here and I can set that to my PowerPoint presentation again. Now, uh, this can be a little bit tedious doing it like this and you can't have transition effects when you're swapping it manually like this. So what you can do is you can create the mix and then you can send the mix to this particular uh, full screen output. So what I need to do is go up to my full screen output for display two, which is this monitor here. And then I'm going to select my mix input, which is input number nine. As you might remember from before, we did actually set up this layer to use the mix input as well. So that means that this mix input and this mix input are the same thing. So we have one going out to our screens locally, and this is a part of our production on this particular layer. So when now when I transition, you will see the same thing. Now this one will be slightly slower because it's going into vMix and then being sent back out, um, but usually it won't really matter because it's live and that's all they're seeing. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to transition that. As you can see, the transition happened and we can now start using both of these as a part of our production. But this one's going out locally and this whole thing is going out to our live stream on our main production output. There are plenty of things that you can do with the mix input, but one of the things that you might find handy is being able to keep your inputs contained within set boundaries. Now, what do I mean by that exactly? Well, if you have an input that's in a virtual set and you crop it or zoom it, then you may have some issues. So I'll show you quickly what I mean by that. So as you can see here, I have a virtual set. I've got my camera and my overhead camera. So if I go into my overhead camera here and I zoom it, for example, you're going to see that it's outside of those boundaries. I'm just gonna quickly reset that back. Now, if I use a mix input instead of using the actual individual input, it creates a shell and renders out that within a certain boundary. So you're not actually going to go outside of the boundaries of the virtual set. So I'll show you quickly how to do that. So instead of using the overhead camera as my input here, I'm going to select mix two, which will now be using this mix two here. And if I go ahead, go back into this overhead camera and zoom it, you'll see that it's actually zooming within the confines of that rendered shell of the mix input. So that's something to keep in mind if you are playing around with virtual sets and you wanna create that sort of shell that's rendered within the virtual set so you can zoom and crop. Now, one final thing, you might've noticed around vMix that there is a mix dropdown on certain shortcuts and trigger options. So by default, this is going to be set to one because one is your main output mix for your production. So if you are setting up a basic transition shortcut in your production with vMix, then you'll keep this set to one because it's for your main production. Now, if you wanna set a transition for your mix input, you'll need to select the mix input that you want to be using with that transition. So I have mix two set up here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a shortcut transition for it. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the settings section and then go down to shortcuts and oh, it looks like I've still got my auto tune. Do you believe in life? That's enough of that. Uh, and then I'm gonna to go to add, fine. Now I'm just gonna hold down the space. I'm just gonna use space for this one. And then I'm gonna create a uh, transition for my uh, mix. So I'm gonna go, okay, function. I'm just gonna create a basic transition here. 
So let's go with a cube zoom. Now for the input, I am going to select the preview and that's going to take it from preview to program. And then the mix is mix two. So that's mix two that I've created down here. I'm gonna click okay, then okay. Now I'm gonna hit space and you should see a cube zoom uh, transition between these two as you did there. Like so. All right, so that is about it for the mix input. There are a few other things that I'm sure that um, I haven't covered, uh, but if you have some really awesome uses for the uh, mix input, feel free to drop us a comment um, so that we can take a look and other vMix users can have a look as well. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more about the mix input and other vMix related things, you can visit our website at vmix.com and check out our training videos, help files, knowledge base articles. And if you also need a support request from us, please use the contact page. Um, we can't answer technical questions on YouTube comments, especially for really technical things like this. So that's it for the mix input. Hopefully it's shown you some really good ways that you can use it in your production. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later.